Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Boy, do we have a lot to get to today. A tremendous amount of things to get to. New purchases and reviews and things like that. Let's get right to it. Let's start off, sit back, relax. We got a, quite an episode to get to. Okay, first off, as you can see, we're well into our 30 screwdrivers in 30 days. And uh, I just want to show you, this is what they look like before they go into the golf ball. You can see here now, again, these are more prototypes. You can see the difference. Some of you may not recognize the difference, but each one of these shafts are a little bit thinner and thicker to get the right feel and this is about how far they go in to the golf ball you can see here now uh i took some pictures you know again we're not finished with the prototype but some pictures of the length the width the type and and this shaft has to fit snugly in here and then there's a pocket here where the uh this goes in where it's almost a press fit but there has to be enough room for epoxy. So we have this going. But now I wanted to put some different color balls on top. Right? I mean, that's where the fun comes in. So I ordered these cool Nitro Eclipse golf balls. Because look at the cool colors. Now the one thing you can all attest to is that when these balls or any golf ball gets painted from the factory, that's like a bulletproof coating. If I tried to paint it myself with paint, it would chip off, flake off. This, I don't know what kind of paint they use. It's like bulletproof. But, and look at that. You say, wow, cool colors, right? You know, to a match, like if you want to do a orange and white and orange you see what i mean how how things start to but the problem is when i got these particular balls look at the dimpling on here they look similar but then you see here this is a regular this is a different kind of dimpling it doesn't have the same feel this has a tremendously grippy great feel this doesn't have quite the same feel so I'm a little up in the air on what to do. It just doesn't feel the same, and I don't want to... Ah, it's a shame. What nice colors, too, right? Now, this is the acrylic rod I've been working with. I bought this... Uh, I got this at a flea market or something, and, and this stuff is not, not cheap at all, but I did just get some new stuff, and let me show you. I think you're going to okay, love it. Okay, what do you think about this, huh? Look at this. A little Scout Craft of Red. How beautiful is that, right? And look at this, like a cobalt blue. Oh my God, I mean the opportunities that opened up and here we have some clear rod, okay? And uh, how nice is this? Now, like I said, this stuff isn't cheap. This, right, what you're looking at here is almost like $80 worth of acrylic. Just what you see here, you know? This stuff is not, it's, it's like $13 a foot. But I'll tell you, and that's why you try and limit yourself as much as you can, you know? Because uh, out of a foot, you gotta remember, you gotta cut you have to have three inches at least to start with. So, you know, you try and you try and get it as low as you can without compromising strength. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Okay, next up, uh, years ago, you'll see on a lot of vintage ratchets and things like that, on the very top here, there was a hole drilled in there and they would put a ball oiler in there. And sometimes it would pop out and you would see this hole on the top of a ratchet. They also had it in different machinery, um, lathes, things like that. Anywhere where they wanted you to be able to put oil in. And a ball oiler, this is what they look like. And uh, like I said, Ben Mall did a, uh, a video a while back where he had one that was missing. It was just a hole back there. And there was somebody put a set screw in, which is just to keep the dirt out. But... Uh, I want to show you, you can buy these ball oilers, uh, they're, they're very cheap if you get them overseas like everything else, but they're all the, made the same way, I'm going to show you a larger one here so you can see them, all it is is a ball, a, a, like a ball bearing with a spring, you see the spring holds that ball in there, so how it works is this gets pressed in, what you do is you drill a hole, it's got to be a press fit, you drill a hole to whatever size uh, oiler you have, like this one here, you would drill a hole and then you would press this in. And then when you press this in, when you want it to oil, whatever you need it to oil, like the ratchet, let's say, you would take an oil can that is specifically made for oil, for ball oilers, like this one here. This can is made just for that. You see that tip on there? It's a little bit different than many of your other tips. And the reason that is, watch how this works. You would take your, your tip here, you would press the ball, and when you press the ball, the ball would recess in, 
and let the oil see see that makes a seal and then the oil would squirt through here as you pumped it out let's get a little oil coming up here uh there we go see the oil coming up through the tube there and then watch what happens as you squeeze it through you see the oil starting to fill up that ball oiler and that's how that works so you need a specific type of oiler but you also when you ever get a hole in a, a, a ratchet or something like that you can buy these and you buy it to a specific size and just press them in next up i know a lot of you were looking for a, a grinder to use and to buy and uh, i was at lowe's a few months ago and i saw this but they were all sold out every time i went back or looked at different lows these things are always sold out now what this is it's a craftsman 7.5 amp they make another one that it's a, a six amp and it actually costs more i don't know why but it's a shorter one this has a lot of the features that i look for let's open it up take a look at it the price on this is forty dollars forty dollars three-year warranty let's look okay, at okay in the box this is what's included you have your handle they give you a grinding disc the owner's manual this has to be the strangest looking pin wrench I've yet to see yet and uh, and the unit let's take a look at it. okay so here's the uh, comparison between the Bauer you could see here this one is uh, this is an 8 amp this is a seven and a half amp so this wins by half an amp uh, they're basically very similar in design they got the rat tail design which I love couple things I like over the, the Bauer about number one is the trigger it's got the trigger here you just squeeze it and press the button to lock it or whatever very simple the uh, craftsman they got this ridiculous you know safety that you got to press here and the reason they do that I guess so that you don't when you put it down it don't trigger it on whatever the case but it's just annoying to use and the the lock on button is again it's guarded so that's a little pain to use so I'm not crazy about that one thing where this craftsman wins out you see these handles can be positioned on either side left which i'm a righty so it works here you can put on the right if you're a lefty or you can put on top with the uh with the craftsman which is nice because you could hold it like this if you're doing uh for certain jobs where the bower doesn't have the top position to hold it on um this is a little bit thinner and uh, it feels just a little bit lighter too but uh other than that and one other thing nice about the uh, craftsman you see the guard here now to release the guard a lot of times you want to move the guard depending on if you're using this side of the brush or whatever so with here you got to loosen this up here spin it and lock it back down no big deal but it's nice that you have that chance that you could lock it down uh with the sears one thing nice is it's screwed on in such a way that you could do it just by hand like that you don't have to do anything so you could turn it like this, you know, so that's that's pretty nice. And uh, other than that, uh, I guess I prefer the Bauer, but this is, again, 40 bucks. You can't beat it. Let's see what it sounds okay, like. Okay, we have an earbud alert if you have earbuds in, but I just want to show you what it sounds like here. does have a big wind down so maybe that's good bearings i don't know we'll give it a try i'll let you know in a couple months okay, how next it is next up a good friend of the show by the name of andy m andy asked he says oh, do you have a lathe for both wood and metal i <laughs> i think i have about six or seven lathes but let me tell you something i know i've been pushing you guys to buy a lathe right and some of you are there but you go looking at the prices you're like i can't afford a lathe they're too expensive i think i might have a solution for you so if you uh if you're very easily persuadable and you don't want to spend the money, you better turn the video off now. But uh, let's check this out. Okay, what you're looking at here is uh, the second lathe I bought. I bought a big grizzly lathe, my first one. It was horrible because it didn't have rigidity. Remember what I was talking about, rigidity? It did not have it. And this lathe is, is one-fifth of the size of that one was, but it's much better. And let me tell you what you can do with this lathe. You can do everything that you'll basically need to do. Now, this one's a little crude because this was kind of the first models they came out with. This one I paid, I think, a hundred and about $150. You can get the same exact lathe today, more or less, for $300. And it's on sale, I think. So, 
Okay, I'm pushing you, I know. But let me show you some of the cool things you could do with just this little guy. And you could teach yourself everything you need. Now, I'm a big fan of buying something small, learning on it and something, then selling it and moving up. But you don't know what you like until you have at least one. So why spend $3,000 on something you have no idea? You've never had one. I learned so much from this thing. And this is what most of my scouts learned on. It's light enough that you could transport it. Look, you could lift it up. You could take it wherever you need to take it, bring it downstairs, whatever you have to do. And you could learn on this and have a lot of fun and you could do a lot of different projects. Now, uh, basically it's a, it's a bare bones lathe, but what's nice about it has a good motor. It's variable speed, which is a great thing. And you can hook up a lot of accessories to it because you see here, this is called the headstock. Now the headstock has the spindle here. And this is what, this is a three quarter by 16 thread. Very common. You could put different things. You could put chucks. You could put all kinds of things. Has a Morse one taper in there. Uh, I, the only difference is this little thing here I made, this little handle. It doesn't have a handle, but I like to turn my work when I'm working sometimes. So I just made this. But other than that, this is exactly the way these lathes come. And let me show you some of the cool things. You now can do you could it. mount because this is nothing more than a drill press laid on its side or more or less. So you can mount all kinds of accessories here. You could put uh, grinding, buffing wheels, wire wheels, things like that. Uh, this is a Morse one taper. This is called a drive spur. And you can see when you put that in, you just pop it in and that's in there you're going to have to, the only way you could get it out is to use a tap rod and tap it in from the back see i'm putting it in here and you tap it in and this will come out it's the only way you can get these out once you put them in so there's your drive spur and you have the same thing you have a live spur on the uh here you go on your tail stock so what you do is your same thing you pop it out that's your live center that's what's called there and you push that in like that now you with just these things these two things you could turn work between Let me centers. show you how easy this is you go to the home depot you pick up a two by two you can even take a two by four and cut it down you know rip it down the middle but take a two by two you cut off a small piece like this right you make an x from one corner to the other you take your all you push it right in the middle of that X like this, just to make a hole. It don't have to be perfect, but you put a hole right in the middle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take and place, you got one hole on each side. You're going to put it in these little, between the centers here. Okay. You're going to push this down like this, get it in that hole, lock your tail stock like that, and then push this in like this. You see, I'm turning this down. That'll lock it into the drive okay, spur. You see, as we tighten this handle up here, you see how it's pushing it in and locking it into that drive spur there so that that will hold this. And when you turn it on, you're ready to okay, start. Now, turning. this is where this, the uh, variable speed comes in nice. So I'm going to turn it on at a low speed. You see, we have it. That's a low speed, and you could turn it up. Beautiful, variable speed, you don't have to worry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the steady rest on. The steady rest goes like this, okay? And we're going to put it here so that it's, uh, you want to make sure that you're not going to hit here. And then we're going to run the tool across. I'm just using a tool that I actually made, just to any kind of tool. And we're going to run it across here and we're going to make this square into a round. Let's check this out. Let's have some fun. Okay, you can see now this is pine. Pine gives you a, you know, kind of a tear out uh, because pine, that's just the way it is. But don't worry, we're going to get past that. So now we made a square into a round, made some chips, right? This is where it gets fun. Now, let's say you want to make a file handle, okay? So we want to make uh, one side bigger than the other. You know, let's say we wanted to have the file handle face this way. So we'll cut this down and then we'll make this into a, a handle. Now you see where we're going with this, right? We just get a basic shape of what you like. Now, uh, again, we're doing this all with one tool. This is really, you know, where you have fun. You buy different uh, cutting things to give you better uh, finishes. I'll show you. I'm going to take a carbide bit and just show you what the difference is and how the finish is with that.
Now you see the difference just using a, a nice carbide bit. You see, you see, look at that. Look at the finish. How you no, know, you don't have the tear out you have with that other one. But this is just where again you have fun. Now uh, you'd want to refine this. You could put little uh, embellishments like uh, by taking a. You can even use a nail just to make lines in here. Here's a nail. Watch. There we go. You see that? How much fun is this? Up, we'll do some sanding, but before we do, we take a piece of wire and we're going to darken these lines that we made. Using friction. Come on. Is that not fun? Next up, this Triple E Ultra Shine isn't cheap, but man, what a job this does. It's like a, a wax with a uh, an abrasive in it. And watch what this does here. You just put this on like this, and then it burnishes into the wood, and it will make a finish right there. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. This is great. Wow. Can you get a good look at that there? Look. That's pretty nice, right? That's just pine. Okay, so you release the tailstock, move this over. This falls right off, and there we go. We have a nice little file handle or whatever. Now, you left that little line there so that you can cut that off with a saw. You could drill this out to any size. And for this, well, we could do something nice around the okay, top of Okay, next, that. take a small drill. Drill just where the seam, where the uh, end meets. Just drill down about a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to take a piece of wire, you're going to slip it in there like this, and we're going to wrap it, you see, put it around there, and then we're going to wrap it around very tightly around the top here. Okay, so here we go. Now you see we wire wrap the top here, and we drill the two holes. One goes in, one goes in the top. It's bent. You push that in there. Now you could always dip this in epoxy, and that'll hold it, you know, from ever coming off, but... Uh, and then we drill a couple holes in here, and you could see you could put a file. You know, you, you drill a, a larger hole than a small hole. Now that file is in there, it won't come out, you know, until you pull it out. And then all you would have to do is cut the bottom off, and uh, you can paint it or whatever you have to do. So there we go. Now this is why you need a lathe. That'll be given away at Jacktown if anybody wants it. Okay, so in closing, uh, I know I'm I'm kind of pushy when trying to get you guys to buy a lathe or something but if you've been on the fence this might just be the little nudge to get you to 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 go for it now if it is congratulations uh you know you don't you don't regret buying a tool you never do and if the worst comes over this three hundred dollars it's not a lot of money when you think it's what two tanks of gas today <laughs> so what are you going to do, right? You're not going to regret it. And later on, you know, you could teach the kids how to use it. You know, the wife can, she'll love it. Everybody can have fun on it. It's just a lot of fun. And you could buy accessories and build up a little bit. And then at least in a couple months, you could say, I like it or nah, it's not for me. You know, I remember I, I got into making stained glass, you know, stained glass. Uh, I spent... <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of dollars on glass and and all the equipment to make stained glass and man it's time consuming i only made a couple pieces and, and i was like yeah i don't have that kind of time so uh, you know i learned the, the hard way but with this i, I think you'll like it so anyway hope the hope you uh got something out of it thanks very much for tuning in 18 minutes went like fast for me take care now bye-bye